This is part two covering baseball game series that saw release on the 32X. Up next, we're gonna talk about World Series Baseball. This is Retro Impressions and Reviews, a show dedicated to answering if video games from the past are still worth your time today. World Series Baseball was at one time considered the best baseball game money could buy. It was developed by Blue Sky Software and designed by the veteran team of Chuck Osage and Dana Christensen. Before coming to Blue Sky, Christensen had been designing arcade baseball games, with his first release being the 1985 hit, World Series The Season. After joining Blue Sky in the early 90s, the pair was tasked with designing the Joe Montana Football Series. Activision, known as Mediagenic at the time, was originally tapped to develop and design the game, as Sega and its partner studios had no experience in American football. A deadline was in place to ensure a Christmas release, but by late September, it was made clear that the work on the game had hardly begun. With no other option, Sega turned to EA and was able to work out a deal, allowing them to use the John Madden football game engine. The developer of John Madden was tasked with reworking their game into Joe Montana football. By January, the game was finished and released to the public. Enough changes were made that it's hard to tell the two games are so closely related. Try not to repeat the same mistakes twice, Sega turned to trusted developer Blue Sky. As Sega would not be using the Madden framework again, a new game had to be built from the ground up. Osage and Christensen would work together as a design team for the entirety of the series, and when it was finally done, would be tasked with designing a new game, World Series Baseball. These 80s arcade games, plus the experience gained while working on the Joe Montana series, and the desire to maintain as much realism as possible played a heavy influence on the final release. This was the first baseball game to acquire both a Major League Baseball and Players Association license, allowing it to use real players, teams, and logos. The game recreated actual stadiums based on film the art team had taken while visiting each of the stadiums. The camera position showing the batter and pitcher was also heavily influenced by World Series The Season. It was intended to make the game more immersive and player pitching more exact. Unlike many other baseball games of that time, you could not move freely around the batter's box and were stuck in a stationary position. So let's talk about what's important, and that's the game itself. Season lengths of 13, 26, 52, 104, and 162 games are available. There's also batting practice, a home run derby, and exhibition mode. It has some great commentary due to the inclusion of the sports talk system. If you're unfamiliar with it, the sound is similar to that of a speaking spell, and that's okay by me. One oddity is the lack of in-game music, and an awful hissing noise that I think is intended to be crowd noise. Luckily, there's enough commentary to avoid an overabundance of dead space in the audio. Everything controls extremely well on the field and from the pitcher mound. To throw the ball, position the cursor where you want to toss it, then press A, B, or C to select the pitch type, and A, B, or C again to select the pitch speed. While batting, there is zero control over your position inside the batter box. A, B, and C give you the option to hit normal, bunt, or power swings. Then wait for the ball and see if you can make contact. Although I feel the decision to give less control to the batter is negative, the ball is still easy to see, time, and hit. Players were given differing abilities to reflect their real life selves, and the game tracks stats via a battery backup. Besides that, it has all the standard fare you might expect from a baseball game, but nothing flashy, and nothing that really stands out as worth mentioning. The gameplay is extremely slow paced, with the game stopping after every at bat to show the scoreboard then pausing again until you make a selection on how you're going to pitch or bat. It's slow navigating menus and slow returning to the action when there's no more action to be had on the field. Nothing about this game is fast or efficiently done, making it feel like I was being saddled with a chore rather than playing a fun and enjoyable game. With the release of World Series Baseball 95 came some major changes. The cart size was increased from 16 to 24 meg, and Sports Talk was removed from the game as it was only included in the original due to time constraints. The extra space was used for additional features like a new mode allowing you to create custom playoff brackets and some refined animations. 
There isn't much else to talk about here as it's hard to see any difference between the original and 95 if you have the sound muted. Turn the sound on however and the game is an empty void with very little commentary, no music, and terrible implementation of various sound effects. The sound in this version really makes me feel like I'm playing baseball team practice edition rather than actual season games. Next up, number 11. It's a long fly ball deep to left center. Way back! Going, going, gone! Oh, run! Now bad at for the Brewers, the center fielder. Next up is World Series Baseball starring Deion Sanders. Released in February of 1996, it has a late 1995 season lineup. There is not much positive to discuss here as it offers absolutely nothing new in terms of gameplay over what's found in the 95 edition. In fact, there is some heavy letdown starting with the impression the game gives that it might somehow have something to do with Barry Sanders, or something special and unique over the other series games. If this game was never released or talked about, and someone found a cart without a label on it, there's absolutely nothing to indicate that this was called anything other than World Series Baseball. No series number, no year, and no special 32x tag alongside any of it. The phrase, starring Deion Sanders, isn't in the game, and Deion Sanders isn't given any kind of special treatment or attention that a B-list bench rider for the Montreal Expos isn't receiving as well. So there has to be something new, some reason this game was put out on much more advanced hardware. Hardware that required the Genesis to work. Well, there is one new feature, a zoom in effect on some outfield plays. Sometimes it works, but mostly it's a jumpy, twitchy, motion sickness inducing mess. The sound is awful. In fact, I can't think of many games that are worse. It's not because they included something new, but because the mixing is about as bad as it gets. The white noise crowd sound is headache inducing it's so loud. Just listen. He screams one to second. Both games are set at the same volume but the 32X is so much louder. It's unreal that they made it this loud and annoying without an option to turn it off. The only option is all sound effects are on or off, and that's unacceptable. Up next is World Series Baseball 96. What's new in this game? Well, the opening splash screen, opening music, and a roster update. That's it. One thing that makes World Series Baseball 98 interesting is the year they assigned to it. They didn't skip a year then make this game, they just skipped over 97 and went right to 98. A lot of the more popular sports games of the time were naming their games in this fashion and still do so today, so it makes sense that Sega would feel the need to get in line with the naming systems used in other franchises as to not seem a year behind. Beside roster updates, opening music, and a new splash screen, it's identical to 95 and 96. I've actually owned this game for some time now, and as you're about to find out, have never been much of a fan. I was always under the impression that this was an exclusive title to the 32X, but after playing all the games in the series that were on cart, that couldn't be any further from the truth. I anticipate minimal updates when going from year to year with most sports games, New audio, some gameplay changes, roster updates, graphical updates, and changes to game modes. Typically, if you wait two years or more, you're guaranteed some major changes. Not with this series, though. Imagine you purchased World Series Baseball 95, then picked up the 32X version. It's the same game. What if you waited to pick up the 96 version? Still the same freaking game. What if you waited and sprung for the 98 release? Imagine how blown away you'd be to find out it's still the same frickin' game. It's about as pathetic and shameful as it can get. 
Now I'm not going to rank these as there's really only two games here, World Series Baseball with Sports Talk and without. It's now time for the final scores. First up is the 32X version. My final score, 3 out of 10. This just isn't a good game. It has good aspects such as solid gameplay when you're batting, pitching, and fielding, but it feels like bare essentials in what I want and expect of a simulation style baseball game. There is absolutely nothing endearing, special, or unique about this game. It's very slow paced, the menus are sluggish, and I can't think of worse audio on the Genesis or 32X. Sure, you could turn the sound off, but should you have to? The game is boring and feels like mental torture when playing it. It's bar none the worst of the series and should only be considered by those looking to complete a 32X library. Last is the original World Series baseball game released on the Genesis. My final score, 4 out of 10. Besides what I just covered in my 32X review synopsis, there are two things this game does better than the 32X version. Graphically, it makes better use of the hardware it's on, and the sound is better. It's not good, but it's better than the next four released in the series. So what's the better game on the 32X, RBI, or World Series? They're both terrible games with nearly identical offerings, but World Series is the better game. It just simply plays and looks better. In addition, RBI 95 on the 32X really comes across as a poorly done knockoff of World Series Baseball and not much else. Thanks for watching. Feel free to leave a positive or negative comment letting me know your thoughts. Click the subscribe button if you enjoyed the video and feel free to share my videos on social media sites such as Reddit. Until next time, this has been Retro Impressions.